For these training evolutions, we're going to be stretching dry lines. Always when stretching dry lines, you should have the minimum PPE, which should be steel toe boots, firefighting gloves or work gloves, and a firefighting helmet. The reason for that is the couplings and the nozzle have a little bit of weight to them. We don't want to pinch our fingers, smash our toes, or take a shot to the head. All right, this is the 200 foot pre-connect. It's in a flat load fashion. It's got two reference points for us. It's got a 50 foot set of ears and then a 100 foot set of ears. Nozzle firefighter, backup firefighter. Nozzle firefighter is going to come in. He's going to grab the top set of ears and also embrace the nozzle. As he pulls that top set of loops, he's going to cup the nozzle and cup the bail. He's going to twist and stiffen his arms, walk forward until the bundle comes onto his shoulder. He's going to stop and wait for the backup firefighter. The backup firefighter is going to grab the second set of loops, which is going to be 100 feet of hose, and is going to leave 50 feet of hose in the, in the hose bed. He's going to pull it in the same fashion, start the loops off. He's going to hold that square. He's going to twist, stiffen his arms, walk forward, and let the hose drop onto his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Once the hose is shouldered, I'm going to reach back as the backup firefighter and clear the hose bed. All right, move forward, and now we'll progress forward to the drop point. The nozzle firefighter has spaced himself at least 30 feet away from the door. This will give him plenty of room for his 50 foot section to flake out. Once he finds his drop point, the backup firefighter can now drop in the vicinity. The nozzle firefighter is going to grab, stop right there. The nozzle firefighter is going to grab the coupling and the nozzle. He's going to place the nozzle in the hand that he, or the side of the hand where he wants the nozzle to end up. The coupling is going to be to the inside in relation to the second hose dump. All right, the nozzle firefighter is going to walk backwards towards his target. He's doing a motion that we call shaking the sheets, which you can see helps him deploy his first 50 feet of hose. And it ultimately is going to deploy at least 25 to 30 feet of the next section of hose. I can clearly identify my couplings in the order based off of when I drop the hose. My next coupling that's in line for this section of hose is going to go in my inside hand. My coupling that's going to be connected to the truck is going to go in my right hand. And as I walk backwards, I'm going to do the same motion that the nozzle firefighter did and what we call shaking the sheets. See the couplings clearly come up and with a quick, easy adjustment here, all my hose is nice and clean, couplings to the front door, nice 25 foot loops, which is going to be easy and less taxing on me when the line is charged and we have to push inside of the building. When the nozzle firefighter grabs the nozzle and grabs his first coupling, he ultimately guides where the hose goes and where the rest of it's going to flake out. In this demonstration, the nozzle firefighter is going to switch hands and you'll see that he'll guide where the couplings go and where the rest of the hose ultimately will have to get flaked out accordingly. You can clearly see by the simple task of his hands being in the wrong position, the backup firefighter has dropped his bundle thinking the nozzle was going to end up to the firefighter's left or the building's right or delta side and ultimately we now have hose that's crossed. By simply putting the nozzle in the correct hand and the first coupling in the correct hand, we guide the momentum of where the hose is going to lay out appropriately.